Again, my name is Paul Kaur. I'm with Perfect Golf Event. We help um, organizations uh, organize, manage, and promote successful golf events. We do a lot of work with schools, alumni organization, boosters, athletic directors, uh, especially now when people are trying to raise additional funds. We certainly have a lot of challenges in the economy right now. So we're going to walk through the basics of it. And uh, if you're an experienced organizer, there may be some basic things that you'd say, I already knew this. If you're new, I think you'll learn some other things. But hopefully you'll find it to be a, a useful t use of your time. Uh, just from a housekeeping, housekeeping standpoint, um, you can take notes, obviously, as we go along, um, but I'll be also glad uh, at any point to, um, at the, after the session, um, just email me, Paul, at Perfect Golf Event, and I'll send you all the slides that we have. Um, we're also recording it, so we'll have a recording version uh, that we'll post later on. Um, so, again, thank you very much for listening, and, and we're going to get started, and uh, hopefully it uh, is what you expected, and you'll get some value from it. So let's first of all talk about why golf events are effective fundraisers. Obviously, they're a way to reconnect with supporters in a safe and social environment. Um, there's been a lot of restrictions, and this gives you a chance on a golf course to spread out a little bit. Uh, it allows you to communicate to your supporters, your boosters, your sponsor, your alumni, things that are happening with your program. Um, good news is it allows you to introduce your organization maybe to some new people. Um, in a golf event, about 75% of the people that attend the golf event are guests, and you may get a chance to get them involved with other things that you're doing. And of course, you can raise not only money from the golf event, but there's other event day activities that you can have uh, to raise more money from the participants as well. And the good news is if you have a, a, a fundraising golf event, if you can make it past the first year, there's a good chance you can continue on. I, I actually work with Cornell University's alumni group, um, and they've had their fundraising golf event for 65 years. That's the oldest one that I could find. But um, so there, if you have it, you can keep it going. You can keep raising money, get people involved. So it's a good thing to set. And it's also right now because of the COVID, golf is a very safe option versus some of the large group fundraising activities that you might have had before, like a 5K walk or you have a gala or other things you're having at your school where you're limited in terms of the amount of people that can be there. But luckily, in a golf course, you can spread out. And um, it's been a very, very popular uh, option in the fall. And we're already seeing a you know, number of events already set up for 2021. As you're going through the process of setting up your event, today we're going to talk about some of the formats. We're going to talk about how to sell sponsorship, sponsorship packages. But as you're getting organized for 2021, I mean, obviously you want to make sure if you're doing an event, you've got a golf course and a date. Um, if you need a golf course checklist, if this is your first event, um, we have a golf course checklist. We can send you the tell you the things you need to ask the golf course. You want to be careful about things in the contracts now, about food and beverage minimums, because you don't want to have sit-down meals necessarily uh, planned just now until we see how things shake out. Um, this is also a good time to organize your committee. If you've done a golf event before, if this is your first one, the committee is really an important part of your fundraising golf event. And if you had it in the past, this is a time to add new members and maybe energize your event. If not, this is a time to organize your committee and get some dedicated people on there that can help. You obviously want to make sure your website's set up. Hopefully, you'll use Perfect Golf Event for your website. Um, but if not, um, you certainly want to have a re website for online registration and promote sponsors. And I'll show you some examples of that in just a second. And then you want to make sure you've got your financial projections put together. I'll walk you through those just right now. So one of the things you want to do, and if you don't have this spreadsheet or something similar, I'd be glad to send you a copy of it. Just send it to me, Paul, the Perfect Golf Event, or just for support. <clears throat> but you want to lay your event out, and you want to make sure that you put together your revenue projections for this year. Um, if you had an event in the past, you want to plug in the results from 2020, if you were able to have it this year, or 20, 2019. So you can see where you have an opportunity to increase in a certain category. You also want to put all your expenses on the spreadsheet so that you have a good picture when you're working with your staff and your committee about what you're trying to accomplish as a goal. Um, you, you know, a good goal for a golf event is not to say we want to raise as much money as possible. The goal is to set a fixed amount and say, okay, we're going to try and raise 15000 20000 25000 whatever it is, <clears throat> and then look and see how the numbers work to achieve that goal. 
So then this spreadsheet, you'll get your total. And then you can look at your totals and say, it looks like we're falling short, but we're either going to have to raise more money on sponsorships or raise the player fees or, or look at our uh, expenses a bit. When you're, when, it, when you're calculating your fees, one thing that's important, and again, I've been doing this for 16 years, um, make sure when you're setting your costs that you don't go too low. Um, it's hard to raise fees each year. So, you know, have a really good event, and I'll talk about formats that will attract people in a minute. Um, but make sure you, if you're having your first year event, set a good, a good cost for it. Don't go too low. Don't go cheap You because it's hard to raise it. If you have an existing event, make sure you're adjusting it each year a little bit so that you don't have to look back five years from now and say, hey, we're still charging the same amount, and you have to make, do a big raise. Just each year, just keep moving the amount that they pay. And understand the more you deliver – to the event, the more you're going to get charged, whether it's a great golf course or some of the contests we're going to talk about. Uh, the more you deliver, the more you can charge. And I'll talk a bit about to do it, but make sure that you've got all your costs, and I'll give you the calculations a bit on how to calculate your costs for an event, um, and then how to reduce some of the expenses. But remember, if you're doing a golf event, that the majority of the revenue is going to come from your sponsors. And I'll talk about selling sponsorships in a bit. The players cover your operating expenses. And you can make some money from the players, depending on your golf course. Uh, but the bulk of the net revenue really comes from all the sponsorship revenue that you uh, that you can generate. You want to get out there with a save the date campaign. If you have your date for 2021, you want to make sure that people have got it on their calendars right now because there's going to be lots of golf events. I'll tell you that we're seeing about a 40% increase in the number of events already set up for 2021 because people have found that golf course, golf events are really effective, as we mentioned, and, and they're safe. Um, so you want to lock in your date. You want to get your golf course booked. And then you want to get this on everybody's calendar so they can say, all right, I'm going to put this down for April or June or whatever your event's going to be so you're not competing with another event. You know, your save the date plan is to get your event on sponsor and player calendars. Uh, remember that sponsors are, are preparing their 2021 budgets now, so you'll make sure they know about your event so they can put you in the budget. You want to get some direct campaign to anybody who's been in your events before um, to say, hey, you know, here's the date for 20. Maybe you didn't have it this year because of COVID, but either way, go to people and say, hey, here's our date for 2021. And it's also a good time to get I said new committee members and get new contact information. So I, what I do is I reach out to everybody in my committee, my supporters, anybody who's been to an event and say, hey, can you give me new names to reach out to as potential sponsors and players? So you're going to be building your database of people that you're going to go after for the event. And then, of course, you want to direct everybody to your website where they can get all the information that they need. <clears throat> at the same time, they can actually register for the event. And then for our events, we'll provide save the date um, templates you could use. You need something quick to get out there, uh, whether you're going to sell it as a, a postcard mailing or you want to post it on Facebook or Twitter um, or Instagram or on your organization's website. You want to get that save the date out there as soon as possible. Um, you also want to have a brochure, but the save the date at least gets it on the calendars for people. Now, we talk about technology. Having a website is really important. I said, I'd, I'd love you to use Perfect Golf Event, but if you don't, you want to make sure your website's got all the features that you need. And I'm not going to read all these because I'll give you a copy of this, but make sure that people can process their credit card payments, that you can put sponsor logos up there, that there's a donation feature where people can't uh, come to the event. Um, it gives a chance for the people to update their teams online. So if players change, you've got the most current information. You do want to promote online registration, especially now. People don't want to be having paper things being passed around. Um, nobody wants to mail checks in necessarily. Obviously, my son doesn't even know what a fax machine is. I can fax a registration form in. So you really want to drive everybody to your website. And the good news is you get on the website when you set it up, and I'll give you the example in the next slide, you can add more things to be purchased online. So if somebody's going to register as a foursome, they can also buy raffle tickets, mulligans, whatever it's going to be. You generate more revenue and you collect it right up front on the website. And then it's easy to track all the activity so you have everything for the day of the event. So here's an example. Oh, don't say this. In the test we did in 2019, um, and we updated in 2020, if somebody had an online registration platform, they raised 22%. Uh, more more funds because it's easy to register and pay online. 
It's secure. There's no credit card information floating around on paper forms, and they can add more things to their cart, including the, and get a tax receipt. So, you know, here's an example of an event setting up the registration where the players can register, the team can register, the sponsors can register, <clears throat> but at the same time. They can put in their card at the same time. You know, they can put in raffle tickets. They can put in a super ticket. They can put in mulligans, and they can do that all in one credit card transaction, which really is an effective way to raise funds and collect them up front. So here's the way you can do those. Again, now one thing I'm going to talk about is formats to attract. And I go, I know, and I apologize up front. I tend to go quickly on these because I know all of you have busy schedules. Um, and again, I'll be glad to send you a copy of this presentation so you can go through it more carefully and we will have the recording. So let's talk about formats. And we've really moved our events away from the four person scramble as a basic uh, format. I find that they're boring. If you've played in them, you know sometimes you could be out there for a very long time. Some team always, we call it being pencil whipped. One team always comes in 26 under. You're not sure how that happened. Um, and by the way, everybody does it. There's 99.5% of the 300,000 charity golf events out there are uh, scrambles. So you want to take a look at doing something that are a little different. So we, we're going to give you some ideas on formats. And I have another 40-minute webinar on all the formats, but I'm going to give you the highlights here since we're covering all the different topics. But I like new formats for a chance to energize your event, generate more revenue, and have the players say, hey, that was fun. I want to come back next year. So let's talk about your event. And remember, there are 300,000 charity golf events. And if you're, doing, if you're a school organization, you know that you're competing with other nonprofits in your market. I know some schools are competing with other departments. The band's having a fundraiser. The, the, the football team's having a fundraiser. So they even sometimes compete within the same institution. So what you want to take a look at, and this is important when you're working with your committees, <clears throat> is to say, you know, what is our, what's our event going to look like? So what's happening before our event? How are we going to attract players and sponsors? What's going to make it an interesting event for them to come to? What's happening to prior to tee off? If you've been to an event, you know, a lot of people show up early. You don't want them just wandering around. So what do you have going on? Putting contest, chipping contest, whatever it is to keep them engaged and entertained. What's happening on the course? What's going to happen when they're out there? What kind of contests are out there to keep it interesting and challenging for everyone? And then what's happening after golf? And I'll talk about shootouts in a second. But you want to take a look with your committee and say, hey, what's going to be interesting in our event? What's going to make a person take time away from their business and their family to come to our event rather than just saying, you know, come on out. We're going to have a box lunch. We're going to have golf with the cart. There'll be some scoring and team prizes. That's what the majority of the events still are doing. And I just encourage people to take a look at it and say, you know what, we need to do something different. Here's an example of an event that we're working in 2021. And then you can see that we kind of practice what we preach. For their event, we, we put together their highlight film and basically says, okay, here's what's happening before the event. Here's what's happening on the course. And here's what's happening after, after golf. So when someone looks at these highlights, they can say, wow, I need to be there. There's a lot of good stuff happening at this event, and I want to be part of it. So I challenge everybody who's working on a golf event to look at their event and say, if I was putting in my highlights, what would I have there that would make it interesting for people to play? So let's look at a couple examples of some events, you know, using new formats. Here's an alumni group for a football team. Um, they did this in 2020 in July. They're already, they did actually did two tournaments. They did one in July, they did one in October, and they have two more scheduled for 2021. So, but they put in a couple new things for the event, different than a four-person scramble. So in theirs, they added a $50,000 shootout at the end. And shootout's a pretty simple thing to do. It's, it can be held on any hole, and the players take a shot, <clears throat> excuse me, and if it goes in the hole, they win $50,000 cash. Like a hole-in-one contest, but it's held um, on, a, on a hole near the clubhouse so everybody can watch, and it's held after your event. People grab a beer or soda, gather around it. The shot can be taken from the fairway, so it doesn't have to be on a par three hole. They put in a $10,000 putting contest with a guaranteed winner. And that's something we provide for our events. If you need putting contests with guaranteed winner, you can get it from us. And then they had a $10,000 hole-in-one contest along with 
close to the pin, long drive, straight drive, mulligans, raffle tickets, all that. And they had a website set up with us. So people just went to friendsuniversitygolf.com, registered. They could get in the event. They could uh, see all the highlights. They could buy mulligans. They could buy their raffle tickets. So that's what you're thinking for. So when you look at your event, you got to say, What's, what would I be putting on this that would make it interesting? So there's different formats you consider. And these are kind of the four basic ones. You could have a normal golf event with 18 holes, but you might, for example, uh, during the day say, look, we're going to take the four golf or two golfers close to the pin on the par three holes, and they're going to come in and have a shot for either a million, five hundred, a hundred thousand dollars. Those are insured events. You can get the insurance from us, but at least it says, hey, you can play a normal round for golf, but we're going to finish it off with a cool shootout. Some events have gone to nine par threes and nine regulation holes. I love this format. It lets golfers have a chance to use all their clubs on nine holes, but you end up with nine par three holes. You just move the tee box up on some holes. And it gives you nine hole in one contests, which are more sponsorship opportunities. And then the nine golfers close to the pin qualify for the shootout. Or you can do all par three holes. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, where you move the tee box up on all the holes um, you have 18 par three holes, and that's really fun. And what's great about that format is that you're done in three and a half hours. People love that format. Golf courses love that format because they can play in the afternoon and they can open their tee sheet up in the morning. And the newer one that's because has, we have a number of events already doing this for next year. Um, they're doing 18 holes in the morning, and then they're having a nine hole event in the afternoon with all par three holes. So somebody can play all their clubs in the morning. And then they're going to come back for the shootout or they could play 18 in the morning. They could play another nine in the afternoon on the par three format. So you want to think about what would be interesting and different for your event as opposed to going out and saying, hey, let's have a four person scramble. Here's an event, the Folds of Honor. Um, they did it, a new event. It was new. Um, they for the first year, they went to 18 par three holes. They had 18 hole of one contests. They were done in three and a half hours. Um, they had a shootout for $100,000 for 18 players. So the 18 players closest to the pin were in the shootout. The first year they raised net $106,000. So that's an amazing number for a first year event. And it's already sold out for 2021 because people want to be in this format. They love the concept. Here's a school, one for we do a school down in Florida. Um, they, they went to 18 par three holes. Uh, they do a $10,000 hole in one on all 18 holes. Uh, they play six-person teams because um, they're going to be done in three and a half hours. They put more people on a team. They have a shootout for a million dollars. This event's been sold out for seven years, and it's for a charter school down in Florida. So you don't have to be a huge institution to do something like this, and it'll attract a lot of people from the community that want to come out and play a different format. So just be open to formats that maybe you're going to do additional par three holes. Maybe you're going to do a shootout. You can do a long drive close to the pin. Um, some people have done helicopter ball drops. I've sort of replaced it with a fire truck ball drop. I find it's easier to do. Um, we give about 500 bucks to the local fire department to bring a truck out, and they put that long ladder up, and we drop the golf balls. And, and, and golf ball drops are a great, great way to raise additional money. I teach it in another webinar. But if you have any interest in how to run a fire truck ball drop, uh, just let me know. We just had a school in Jacksonville. Uh, that raised $27,000 just in their ball drop. So be open to new things. That's all I'm asking. These are things maybe you haven't considered before, maybe you have, but the key is let's be open to new ideas and ways to energize your event for, the, for 2021. And we can help you. Any budget that you have, if you want to have a we – can, we can fit a format. We can do 18 par three holes where it's just $1,000 in each hole. You know, the cost on that insurance for each hole is probably 70 bucks. So you can do a lot of different things, and we can help you with whatever budget. I, I just want you to be open to new ideas on format. Other things to think about, if I was doing it for a school, um, you know, some of the things you might want to add, um, and we do this for some of the ones that we work with now, is – you can offer VIP foursomes. So some of my events, I'll say we're going to allow six VIP foursomes. We charge much more than we charge for a normal foursome, but we give them concierge service. We have someone around with them with a, with a beverage uh, cart, makes them Bloody Marys, gives them snacks. They get a special player gift as part of the VIP. They may have cigars and a cigar cutter available. 
Other things you could do is if you have any alumni that are part of your school, you haven't played with a celebrity or alumni that's a notable alumni, you could charge more for that. And of course, one of the big things is play with a coach. A lot of people at the schools we work with, hey, we'll pay extra to play with the head coach, the assistant coach, whatever it's going to be. People like that. They like to network. So these are good ideas for you to raise even more money. So maybe you normally charge, you know, uh, 300 bucks for a foursome or for an individual golfer, maybe 1200 for a foursome. Well, you can charge maybe $2,500 to play with the head coach. All you're looking to do is get more money to your bottom line and give players a good experience. Think about one thing you want to think about because you want to try and fill your event up. And I see some people came in a little later. Um, don't worry if you missed anything. We're recording this and I'll also give you a copy of all the slides. Um, think about an early bird special. So what your goal is to get commitments early, early from sponsors and players. It helps you understand where you are and where you have to put your marketing efforts. So you may want to offer incentives to register by a certain date. Um, so, you know, save so much if you register by the end of January. Um, sometimes I don't like to give discounts, but I'll give them extra things like more raffle tickets or free entry into the putting contest. And the good news is with, with Perfect Golf Event, you can create a promo code that they can use to take advantage of the early bird special, but it's a good way to get people out there right away. All right, now let's talk about selling sponsorships. And again, for those of you who are new, I go quickly because I'm trying to give you all the highlights and there's so much to think about, um, but there's more content recorded on, on our website if you wanna watch more longer uh, webinars. But let's talk about selling sponsorships. Now, you gotta be careful, we're in challenging times now, and so you gotta be really aggressive with your sponsorship sales. You know, if you were counting on local restaurants, a lot of them are closed, so you're gonna have to broaden your net in terms of getting sponsors. So the first thing I wanna say is, most events that I look at don't offer enough sponsorships, meaning they might have a title sponsor and they might have gold, silver, bronze, and they'll have a whole sponsors and things like that. You have to offer lots of sponsorship options so people can find something that fits their budget. And so this gives you an idea of all the different types of sponsorships that you can offer for your event. So again, with your committee, you want to look at that. A couple of things to think about if you haven't done it before. Pin flags are a phenomenal sponsorship. They sell out at every event that I do. Um, because they're, they're inexpensive, they're 30 bucks a piece. They can be 18 different logos on them, so you can have 18 different flags on the course. Um, I sell them for anywhere from 100 to $500, depending on the event, and then we give them to the sponsors afterwards. They frame them, they put it in their office. If you're dealing with alumni, they really love that kind of stuff. And then um, they can, if you have a celebrity alumni, an athlete that was at your school, maybe you get them to sign some of them. Um, I have some events where even though we only have 18 holes, I've sold 36 to 40 pin flags because people want the pin flag to hang in their man cave or their or their den or their office. So make sure you've got pin flags. And if you need a sample pin flag, we'll be glad to do one for you. It helps you sell them. The other thing I want you to think about is card clings. Um, card clings are a great sponsorship. They're a peel and stick. They're static clings. They don't damage the card. But once you get a sponsor on the cart and they show up at your event and there's 72 carts with their logo on it, they come back every year. So it's so important. And you can put multiple sponsors on it. So just a couple new ideas to think about if you, don't, haven't, done, if you haven't done pin flags or cart clings, think about that for, for 2021. You also want to make sure that you've created sponsorship packages that sell. And this is really important to make sure you've got to have sizzle in your sponsorships. If you want sponsors to commit now, you've got to give them some stuff to say, this is worth your money. You've got to be in our golf event and here's what you're going to get. So here's what's going to happen before the event. If you come on, we're going to put a logo on the website. You're going to get branding in our email. We're going to put you in the press release. We're going to feature on social media. During the event, you're going to get a chance to be recognized with signage. We're going to let you put an insert in the goodie bags, literature on the display table, listing in the program. And then after the event, we're going to mention you all the thank you letters. Um, for some of my uh, larger sponsors, I let them send one email out to all the participants. Um, I don't want them to abuse people, but they can do one email out. So make sure you've got a, uh, this laid. Now, and here's an example. So here's an event sample. If you want a sample of what sponsorship packages I do, again, I've been doing this 16 years and I manage 12 events myself. Um, 
I'll be glad to send you a sample of the type of sponsorships you should consider, and you can adjust the cost to fit your area. But the one thing you want to think about is make sure you've got that sizzle in there. So let's, let's take a, this event, the title sponsor, $20,000. And again, your title sponsor, and I'll give you samples of what you should charge for sponsorships on a couple slides. But you want to say, okay, they're going to get two teams. They're going to get a logo on all the marketing materials. And we're going to give you reserved parking when they come in. We're going to give you reserved seating. If we're going to have lunch, if we're allowed to sit down, we may not be. But at the awards reception, I'll have some tables set for you. You're going to get to tee off on hole number one. And we're going to have a custom sign on hole number one with your logo, the names of the team members you have. So everybody feels like, wow, you're, you're a big sponsor for the event. And people like that. If they're going to be a sponsor, for the event, they want to bring. They're going to bring clients out, and they want to show people, "Hey, I'm really supporting this organization." And the good news is, you can add a lot of these things, and they don't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to have reserved parking. It doesn't cost you anything to put aside some seating area or letting off T1. But you've added more sizzle. So what I don't want to see when your event is, I don't want to see where you say, "My uh, title sponsor gets a, a logo on the banner, the welcome banner." And that's all they get, maybe two teams. you got to put more stuff in it now to make it attractive for them. Make sure you're bundling, obviously, the player spots into larger sponsorships. So, you know, for my events, I take about 25% of the player spots included with sponsorship. So if I have 144 players, I take 36 spots and I spread it along the sponsors so that the sponsors have an incentive to come, bring their uh, clients out, participate in the event, and it gives them a good visibility, and it helps you fill some of your spots right away. Now, things you might want to do, if I was if I was an athletic director in an athletic department, I don't know what your local restrictions are, what your what uh, uh, you know what team sport you're doing, but I might do things, even add things that say, hey, you know, if you're uh, you know if you're sponsoring our title, you're the title sponsor, we're going to let you one time lead the team onto the field. Uh, or throw out the first pitch at a ball game, or we'll give you a couple of sideline passes so you can watch a football game from the sideline. Maybe you drop the puck at a hockey thing. But be creative and think of things that you can add to the sponsorships that tie to your organization, uh, you know, to make it, uh, you know, make it attractive. I mean, that's 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 what you want to be thinking. Just, let's be creative and attracting sponsors. And remember, if you use a perfect golf event, you can post all the sponsor logos right on your website, and it gives them the ability to click out to the sponsor's website. That's a big feature. If you're going to set your cost for sponsorships, you want to make sure, and people make a lot of mistakes, they sort of set their pricing before they've done all their analysis. So take a look at where you think you're going to get money from. So these are all kind of the revenue categories that you could have from your event. Then you're going to look at where all you, and I'll give, remember, I'm going to give you a copy of this, so I don't want to read everything to you. Then you want to say, what am I going to spend? Golf green fees, cart fees, food and beverage, gratuities, service fees, course beverages, course food, if I have to do it. So make sure you're putting your budget together. And you have other expenses like marketing, contests, player gifts, awards. So you want to calculate all those things, signs and banners. And then you put those all on that spreadsheet that I showed you earlier that gives you the ability to calculate, say volunteer shirts, to calculate what your costs are going to be. So when you're setting your fees, you're going to take all your expected expenses, divide them by the number of expected players, and that's your cost per player. So if you have expenses of $15,000 and you expect 120 players, don't assume you're going to sell out. Everybody says, oh, I'm going to get 144 golfers. Well, the average number of golfers for an event last year was 110. So let's use 120 as an example. Take the 15, divide it by the 120. That means your cost per player is 125. So maybe you're going to charge 200 bucks to play in the event. Don't be cheap. Don't try and go out there real low. I said, you know, you're better off to charge a little higher and then really market hard and add more things to your event. And so you'll make a profit from the players of $9,000. Now let's talk about the sponsorships. So people always ask me, okay, what are some typical sponsorship fees? Well, again, I don't know your market. You know, I'm in St. Louis, and so I can charge more for some sponsorships. If I was in a smaller community, I couldn't charge as much. But this gives you an example of things you might charge for, like title sponsor for a smaller event, a thousand. Normal would be five thousand. Aggressive one, ten to twenty. I do one here in St. Louis where the title sponsorship is a hundred thousand dollars, and it's been sold for three years. So you want to take a look at this and go through all your sponsorship packages, you know, and calculate. Um, what your costs, what, what you should be selling the sponsorships for. 
And then make sure you put all those into the spreadsheet I gave you or will give you. And then if you're not hitting your number, you're going to have to add more sponsorships. Um, you can reduce your expenses. Um, and one way to reduce expenses, for example, is to trade sponsorships um, for um, to cut some costs. So if you have a program, I would go to a printer that say the printer, hey, if you print my program, I'll give you a sponsorship in my event. So what does it cost you? A sign. So for 18 bucks, you get someone to cut your costs of printing. And you could do that with food and beverage donations and all that. So you're always looking for ways to get to your best bottom line. Let's talk about finding sponsors. And this is obviously very important. How are you going to identify people to jump in for your event? So first of all, you want to start with your committee. Each committee member I have is, is uh, asked to provide a list of potential sponsors. And you want to make sure your committee is involved, has some high energy people with business connections. It's not putting your friends on there. They're going to sit around and talk about the ball game last night. You want people who are like energized and say, come on, let's get to it. How are we going to get this thing going? If a committee member knows someone that could be a sponsor, for example, they say, hey, I know the marketing person at the local bank. We ask the sponsor, hey, could you set up an appointment? Let us go in and talk to them. Do you want to come along with us on the appointment? Get your committee involved. They're really important. I set goals for all my committee members. Say, hey, why don't we all get two sponsors and two teams? You can't put it hard. You can't be hard on them. They're volunteers, so you don't demand it. But you get it going. Say, hey, let's get involved. Get the group energized. That's really important. And you don't have to have a bunch of committee meetings. You can do online meetings. You can do email blasts. You can do conference calls. Keep the, your committee engaged and keep good progress. Let them know what's going on as you go through. Obviously, for your, um, you know, for your event, you're going to contact you know, your supporters, anybody who's been a sponsor before on a golf event or maybe a non-golf event that the, your organization had. They're an excellent source for players and sponsors. And you can add good news on Perfect Golf Event. We have marketing tools. You can upload all the email addresses and use the email tools to email out people with a link to your website. You want to get a hold of all your vendors. Make sure that anybody, here's my rule of thumb. If I'm writing a check to you, I'm going to ask you to sponsor my golf event. So if your bank, law firm, accounting firm, food and beverage, your insurance firm, your cleaning firm, your landscaping people, the people you buy equipment from, whoever it is, you got to get them in there as some kind of sponsor. Maybe they're just going to donate something for it, but maybe you'll get them in as a larger sponsor. So vendors are a real good sponsor source. I use community directories to wherever you are. I happen to live in St. Louis, and, and one of the cities here near me is Clayton, Missouri. And Clayton puts out a directory of every business in the city every year by category. And they give me the contact information. So I got all the restaurants. I got all the insurance firms. I got the law firms. I got the banks. I got everybody in a book. They put it right there. So I use this with my committee to walk through and say to people, hey, who knows somebody here? How do we get them on our potential list of sponsors? And the good news is a lot of these people, including Clayton, have now put it all online. So you can go through and you assign somebody in our committee and go, let's get the names and contacts of businesses in the community. Let's get them involved. And I think you have a real advantage. If you're an educational institution in the community, you've got instant credibility. Kids may go to that school or they want to support the school because everybody knows that a great school district is really good for the community. It's good for housing prices. It's good for everything. Obviously, you want to have a great. And having a high-profile, successful sports program is one of those tools as well. Your goal is to build your list by potential sponsors. And so you're saying, look, this is my list. And if you had events before, you might have people already filled it out. But what you're trying to do is fill in this list with who do I think could be my primary sponsors, who could sponsor contests, hole and pin flag. A barter sponsor is someone that you trade for, like the printing example I gave you. Who can donate stuff for my auction or my raffle? And then what kind of unique sponsorships could I have? You know, um, it could be somebody who sp sponsors um, the pit, uh, the tea boxes or somebody who sponsors a practice ring or somebody who sponsors ha hand-rolled cigars. Just look for them. And the goal, the goal is, is to take those prospects to your committee as a starting point and say, okay, let's look at them. Who knows these people? Where do you think they fit best? So when you approach the sponsor, I mean, you would never go to a small restaurant and ask them to be your title sponsor. It doesn't make sense. So you're going to approach them and ask them for a donation or to be a hole or a pin flag sponsor. But you certainly don't want to go to Commerce Bank and say, do you want to be a pin flag sponsor? No, Commerce Bank, you want to be the title sponsor. 
So that's what you're looking for is to break them down, sign them into categories, and then start your marketing effort. Social media is really an important part of it right now. Because of the COVID, people are spending much more time on social media than they ever did before. And so you want to make sure you're using and really using social media. Um, so I assign one committee member to each social media channel, and I ask them to monitor what we're doing. And the another thing that's good is I'll ask a, for a community service volunteer. Sometimes I'll go to a local college. If you're an ins if you're a higher education place, you might have a student who does it who wants to get some intern skills. Um, recruit someone to come in and help you do really well on social media. Teach you how to really post stuff, because a lot of us, if we're you know over the age of fifty, not really sure the right way to post. But I guarantee you, you can find some young kids in high school or college that would love to jump in and help you promote your event, get that out to everybody, and then and make sure all your staff, supporters, your alumni, everybody, ask them to spread the word as well. And then one of our things we provide for our website customers is we'll give you Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter images perfectly sized so they can go right onto Facebook because that's a different size than Instagram or Twitter. And so you can see here's an, a sample of some event that we did some banners for their, their social media person to start posting, which will link them right back to the website. We obviously don't have a huge amount of money, so marketing on a tight budget is important. Um, so now is the time to get your contact list. As I mentioned before, ask everybody to get you the contact information of anybody who could sponsor or anybody who could play. Get the name, get the address, get the email address. If there's a website, get that and get that onto that list that I showed you. And then you can also add all the email addresses to your marketing list in, under your Perfect Golf Event website. So we want to keep growing that contact list, reaching out to more people. We're going to have to do cast a wider net in this challenging times. And then we've helped a lot of events. Here's some flyers that we did for some other institutions, um, higher education. Here's a boys and girls you know, golf team. Um, here's a football program. Here's a ba baseball. Here's another football. So you flyers are a good thing to use. We have a design team that can help you. But the key of anything on flyers is make sure you're driving everybody to your website so they can see the website, so they can register. A lot of people post their event on their organization website. That's okay, but I like to have a direct link so I don't have to click six times to find the event. If you're just putting it under, here's my organization website, they have to click under events and find the event, it's too much work. Just have a direct thing that goes right to that right to that uh, uh, website for your event. You can still link it off your organization website, but you want to have a direct link. As I mentioned before, you can trade sponsorships for event promotion. So I go to local radio stations, newspapers, and everyone, I say, look, I'm going to give you a sponsorship in my event. Would you promote your event uh, in your newspaper or give us a radio spot? Uh, right now, digital billboards are great because you know, used to have to paste something up there. Now that you've seen the billboards can flip over every 30 seconds, just ask them to put your event in there and give them a sponsorship. It's just a cost. It's just a sign. A press kit is important. I use press kits for all my events um, because it talks about how we're going to use the funds, how the funds have been used in the past. It'll give us some success stories. You know, some of the local media will pick it up from, from it, but if it doesn't, it's still a great sales tool. It's very great, impressive when a, a sponsor sees that you've got a brochure and the same way, here's my press kit. And if you come on as a sponsor, we're going to add you to our press release. It gives your event credibility. It makes you look like you know what you're doing. Some people will do a preview day, for, especially for a new event. It's a good way to jump it. Um, so you hold it 90 to 120 days before your event. You do it at the golf course. You bring a, you have a breakfast, lunch, or reception. You're going to bring in a speaker, maybe a celebrity, a coach, an alumni. And then you ask people to bring people to it. And you ask your members, your booster club staff, supporters, to invite potential people. And then the, the speaker is not talking about the golf event primarily. They're talking about some interesting subject. But they also say, hey, if you want to support us, we have a golf event coming up in June. Why don't you participate in that? Um, sometimes I'll have a putting contest to get people out if I'm doing it at the golf course. It's, it's, it's a good way to jumpstart your event if you're having trouble getting momentum. Another thing, if you want to be in the top 1% of all the golf events in the United States, get some testimonials. So use, you know, get a service. If you've had an event before, 
get a survey done. How did you like the event? Was it effective? Especially if you can get sponsors to say, I've been sponsoring the event for a number of years and it's gotten me a lot of new business. So that is huge for other sponsors considering it. Now, if it's a first year event, you can still get a testimonial. So when I get your first sponsor to sign up and ask them why they signed up and get them to say something like, you know what, we're looking to generate new business this year and we signed up for this golf event because it's gonna be a high level, highly visible event in the community and we're looking forward to getting great new business out of it. But there's your testimonial, post it on the website, give people that credibility. You also wanna ask for referrals. If somebody signs up, just absolutely say, hey, I, I saw you just signed up, call them, thank them for signing up and say, hey, do you have anybody else you think might be interested? Just asking helps. Sometimes you can give them an incentive, say, hey, if you refer someone and they sign up, I'll give you a couple of extra mulligans. You don't necessarily have to do that, Sometimes just asking helps, and they love it, especially if you can get someone from your staff. I mean, getting a call from a head coach saying, hey, thanks for signing up. I appreciate your support in the program. Do you mind giving me some names, some other people we can call? Then the coach turns it over to somebody who's going to do the marketing. And then you want to put that all in a marketing calendar. This is really important for your event. You have to have a marketing calendar that you can review with your committee, and it walks through and says, okay, here's all the things that we have planned leading up to our event to make sure you've got your early bird special plan for January. You've got social media posts scheduled for certain times. When am I doing email campaigns and social media posts for sponsors? So if you want to copy this thing as well, just send a note to perfect golf. I'm sorry. Send a note to uh, support a perfect golf event or to Paul at perfect golf event, and we'll send you the template you can work with your committee on. Last thing I want to talk about is contests. People come to play in golf events because they want to have a fun, fun. So don't be shy about having contests, adding contests. You can sell them as sponsorships. A lot of people say, well, they're paying to play golf. I don't want to ask them for more money, like, you know, for putting con. Well, that's crazy. 75% of the people that come, as I mentioned before, haven't paid anything. They're coming as a guest. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they come as a guest. So get their money. When I go to an event, I bring cash. I know they're going to ask me for stuff, and I'm, I want to, I'm having a fun day. I'm going to get into every contest I can, and I'm going to pay for it. Consider hole-in-one contests. They're a great way to attract people. Um, this is a list of the hole-in-one contests we did in 2020. And you get, it doesn't have to be a car. I don't like cars because you have to do a lease or something. But you could do things like a cigar trip to Cuba, a cookie tour of Italy. You can do whatever, your family trip to Disney World. Anything that you can put a value on can be insured, and we can provide the insurance for it. Here's a new one that we added. Um, it's about 300 bucks for cover an event for everybody to take a shot for the bucket list. But if, they win, if the person gets a hole-in-one, they can pick anything they want off this list. And they just say, okay, I got a hole-in-one. I want to go fly fishing in Canada. Perfect. It's your bucket list. Let's go. So there's you want to add things, and that's what you're going to put up on your website. You're going to say, hey, come on out. We're going to have a hole-in-one contest, chance to win a trip, whatever it's going to be. People sign up for this. Um, and we can customize your event. Here's an event we did in Philadelphia where they wanted their hole-in-one contest to be tied to the, the Eagles and the, the Sixers and the Flyers. Um, so we just said, okay. If you get a hole in one, you get a trip for two for to see the Sixers play Miami and you get to play golf at Doral. Now, we have trouble traveling because of COVID, but these hole in one contests for the winners can be held any time in the next couple of years. So I've done a lot of these custom ones for events in Denver and San Francisco and Chicago, San Antonio, whatever. So anything you think of, we can ensure it makes your event stand out. Because no other event, I can tell you this, no other event in Philadelphia offered these hole-in-one contests. And they called this organization saying, how do I get those? And the, the organization said, well, they're custom to us. They weren't going to give it away. Another thing to think about is what I call a super ticket. This is a really popular concept. So when they register for golf, let's say you say we're gonna, it's going to be 200 bucks to play in my tournament. Here's all the things you're going to get. And that normally you'd have a $10,000 hole-in-one contest. And then they put bonus prize. If you buy 10,000 hole in one prize, we give you some bonus prizes to put on the other par three holes. They're lesser value, but at least they get something if they get a hole in one. So that's all included in their fee. But what I've done on my other events, I charge them 100 bucks more. And if they do that, they get upgraded to the improved hole in one contest. So they still get the $10,000 hole in one contest. But if they get a hole in one, instead of 
tailor-made irons or a $500 gift card, they get two tickets to the Masters, Super Bowl tickets or a trip to Pebble Beach. So they say, wow, if I get a hole-in-one and I was going to win a gift card, well, I think I'm going to get a hole-in-one. I want to win Master tickets. 92% of the people at the events I did this for bought the Super Ticket upgrade. And I also gave them entry into the putting contest, two mulligans, and um, a chance for the shootout. And you could do a super ticket where you bundle a bunch of stuff together. So um, last thing I'll talk about is if you look to do an auction, uh, we'll release our auction package in January. And that allows you to put together a bunch of stuff that's been donated to you. So you can upload your own items. You can select items from our no risk collection of things. Bids can be placed online and you'll raise additional funds. So it's got some nice features for an auction. It's inexpensive and it can be linked right off your perfect golf event website. So you can add all your donated items and then you can also add items on consignment from us. So these are items that you don't pay for unless somebody buys them and then you make money off that. All right. So wrap it up now. Make sure you got your website set up. You got your event set up. We love to help people. I have golf event coaches on staff. So if any of us can answer questions or help you lay out a format or a budget or answer any questions, please just call us. Um, and if you want to copy the presentation or any things I talked about today, just email me at paul at Perfect Golf Event, and we'll be glad to help. Thank you very much. Have a very safe holiday and a great event in 2021.